Good morning, folks. Uh, I just felt compelled to say something. I know I'm not an epidemiologist. I'm not a politician. I've I've got no qualifications at all. But sometimes you just got to get something off your chest, haven't you? Now, some people would label me and others like me conspiracy theorists. I believe that the first lockdown um, was right. I think there's a nasty, nasty virus out there, particularly for the uh, for the elderly and those with with pre-existing conditions. I think the data from all around the world has, has pretty well shown that. And then, of course, we had the, the, the horrible genocide, really, of, of the elderly in care homes um, when they were sent back from hospital without being tested. And the government, no matter what they say, have got blood on their hands uh, for that. Although Matt Hancock on, uh, on both BBC and ITV yesterday morning felt that was just worthy of a smirk. So it uh, probably says a lot about his, uh, his mindset. So I think there is a nasty disease out there. But, and here's the big but, there, and there's always going to be anomalies. And when, when there's an anomaly, when there's a 20-year-old a or a 40-year-old or even, you know, any age, 90-year-old, when any time anyone dies, it's sad and it's horrible. And if they're in your family, it's devastating. And so I, 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 I can't even imagine what it must be like if this has taken someone because I've heard that it's a nasty death. Fighting for your breath, it's horrible. I don't know if it was man-made or, or not. It's looking increasingly like it. But again, if you say that after listening to scientist you're a conspiracy theorist so we'll, we'll go with it with some bat in Wuhan all right but it, it's irrelevant we're stuck with it okay but I have to speak out because looking at the data for the last month in the UK there are no excess deaths to what they're to what they normally are at this time of year in fact, in 2018 and 2015, if you don't believe me, go to the website of the Office of National Statistics and look it up yourself. There are no excess deaths. So why? Why are we now going to tier four in Scotland and um, and, and on, a, on a lockdown in, uh, in England. And Wales have just come out of theirs. Um, Northern Ireland um, pretty much following England. Why? We now know that if you're under 70, the mortality rate, based on all the figures from all around the world, is 0.0. .0 5%, 0.05%. Obviously, if you add the over 75s, um, the over 70, sorry, it goes up to 0 0.2, I think it is. Could be a little bit higher than that. Now, all we can do as, as lay people is listen to the scientists. And you've obviously got Twitty and Patrick Valance being hauled out every so often with graphs that that show basically Armageddon. If we don't lock down, there's going to be 4,000 people, 4,000 people dying by, was it the, the, the 1st of December? No correlation to what's really going on at all. Why, why aren't the government listening to all the scientists? You know, perhaps I don't know. Perhaps a lot of the government have got shares in GSK, like like Patrick Vallon says. I don't know. But why not? I mean, because there's there's people like uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, 
John Leonardis, and Anidis. He he um, he's one of the world's most eminent epidemiologists. Prior to this pandemic, if you said, "Give me the top five uh, epidemiologists in the world," his name would come up more often than not. He's come out and said these lockdowns and, and, and everything are, are murders, really. He didn't say that. That's not his quote. He just says that you know, for the for the for the disease that we're facing, the overreaction now is is crazy. You got Professor Carl Hennigan. Um, he's at Oxford, I think, a professor of evidence-based epidemiology or medicine. He's saying the same thing. He says, if anything, he, he, he closed the schools down for a longer period over Christmas because this is the time of year where respiratory um, illnesses go up and uh, it'll be the school children that are spreading it to the grandparents and those with with underlying conditions. So why aren't the government listening to people like that? Just just their own sage group who must be in a position now where they dare change course. So these people, they're, they're not conspiracy theorists. They're top, top people in their field and they're having videos removed from YouTube. There's got to be something going on other than a pandemic. You've got to be able to see that. You've got to be able to see that. My local hospital, which is in a, a tier four, a tier, a tier four lockdown, my local hospital has got the same amount of admissions for respiratory problems as it has every year. Every single year. So why? Why are we locking down now? Now we know who to protect. And yes, there are going to be anomalies. There are going to be anomalies. There are going to be, um, in fact, in fact, in other years, there's more young people, younger people, dying of flu and pneumonia. That seems to have disappeared, flu and pneumonia. It disappeared. People just dying of COVID, with COVID now. So surely we've got to start asking questions. So why aren't the BBC and why aren't Sky and Channel 4 and Channel 5, any news service, why aren't they asking questions? What are the journalists doing? I mean, I don't, I, I've not got the BBC anymore. I don't watch live television. So I rely on, on YouTube or like the other morning, I was around friends. And he said, oh yeah, I, I, I watch, it's on in the background, I don't watch it. And basically they went to a hospital with someone looking very ill in a bed. And there were five, five doctors around them. And they were saying, oh, you know, we're, we're worried in case we get a, a, a ward nurse come on and said, yeah, we're, we're worried in case we get overrun with COVID cases. In the same way that in a normal year, they're, they're worried in case they get overrun in with, um, with pneumonia cases and flu cases. And that's because we've got the lowest bed per person capacity in the whole of Europe. The lowest bed per person capacity and the government, whether it be Conservatives or Labour before them, doesn't do anything about it. Doesn't do a thing about it. When the Liberals were in with the Tories, did they raise the bed capacity in hospitals? No. No one does anything about it. We knew in March that this was um, possibly, possibly seasonal. So if you're going to do everything, if you're going to have a contingency plan for a pandemic, would you not up the capacity? 
But of course, the problem we got now is that we have got these dormant Nightingale hospitals that have never been used, but we haven't got the staff to to, to staff them. So what what did the Tories do? One of the first things they did when they came in, they took away a bursary for nurses. <laughs> that, those nurses would have been trained by now. But if you are a working class person and you've got the choice of training, you know, uh, and getting yourself a good career and you're, you're getting help funding or or you go work in a factory and you don't end up with a £30,000 um, debt above your head. No matter what the technicalities are, your mindset from that working class background, from that council estate is, oh no, don't want £30,000 for net, uh, debt around your neck. So you don't do it. So you don't do it. We don't invest. We don't invest in our people. And obviously we don't invest in our hospitals or we wouldn't need a lockdown for a virus that hardly affects 99.5% of the population. 99.5% of the population are hardly affected when they get it. When they get it. You know, they've got... <laughs> they're not investing in the NHS. All they've done is stop cancer treatments and heart treatment, treatments for other diseases, other life-threatening diseases that are going to kill tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands over the next two or three years because they're not getting their treatments. And that's a, that's a government. I just don't get it. And, and I'd like a journalist to ask, at what point do the deaths caused by this reaction to the COVID pandemic, how, what, what is the number where you say we've, we've got, you know, we've got, we've got this pandemic, but but we're going to lose more people than we ever lost from the pandemic. What is the magic number for government? Because most statistical sources, and again, don't believe me, look it up in Google, say that the excess deaths from heart disease and cancer worldwide during this pandemic is up to 3 million. There's just over a million COVID deaths worldwide. So at what point, at what point do we say, <laughs> no, the three million should take priority on the one million? And it's terrible. It's a horrible, horrible conundrum to face. I'm not saying it's easy. It's, it, it, it's the same situation as if, um, as if you're in a car crash and um, you've got, you can get the, the four people in the car where you're are unconscious. Three, their seatbelts have, have come loose and you can drag them out easy. Or, or there's the one that's stuck in his seatbelt. The, the petrol tank's about to go up. Do you get the three out or the one? What a horrible situation to be in. That's what the government's facing. I know. But me, I would have to go for the three and 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 have the one on my conscience for the rest of my life. And that's the, that's the conundrum. But if they put the capacity up, but if they trained people in, in preparation for a pandemic. I've done exercises over the years. They wouldn't have that conundrum. They wouldn't have needed to stop all these vital treatments to people. And on the news, it says, oh no, you know, they've gone to this hospital. Oh no, we haven't stopped treatments. They have. They have. I know firsthand, and I'm sure you have, people that have been waiting had their cancer treatment stopped. I know two people personally. 
and that's one person. It's not good enough. Again, all the governments of the UK have got blood on their hands. We need to invest. We need to learn. No, we'll lock down. Save the NHS. No, invest to save the NHS. Do it. Please, any government, do it. And we'll all go out on a Thursday night and we'll clap you. Does you nothing. It really does, watching it. The suffering. And the mental health issues, people who you, you would think were really strong. You know, this is, they've lost their livelihood. Some of them are going to lose their their homes and uh, just sad to watch and it, and it, and it's and it's needless for a disease that that we now know that we now know is uh, let's say it affects let's say let's say it only affects nine let's say five percent of the population which is which is far more than it actually affecting it still wouldn't be worth this. Why aren't these politicians being asked these questions? Journalism seems seems dead. We've got 40, 40 PCR tests that most scientists, even government scientists, admit aren't really fit for purpose and because they're finding evidence of a coronavirus albeit now or, or at some time in the past it's a positive test so the more people we're testing the more people are, are being found the cases are rising the cases are rising they're going to rise have you ever had a cold? I, I, I got something wrong the other day. I, started, I was talking to a, I, well, I overheard a conversation, someone that I knew, and, uh, and, he, and I say a young lad, he was 36, he's a young lad to me. And he was saying, oh yeah, he said, he goes, you know what, I, I, when I get on a bus, I'm sweating with, with fear in case someone spreads it to me. Uh, and, I, and I said hello to the, the person that I know, and I got introduced. To, and, I, and wrongly, because I've read a thing about school children, um, their chances of dying from it, um, said that, well, you've got more chance of being hit by lightning than, uh, than you have from dying um, from coronavirus, which was wrong. Um, but he looked it up and he looked at the, 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 the same... And, and do you know what? I got that wrong, but I, I'm glad I did because you know what he said? He said, that, that's unbelievable. He said, he goes, I watch that news. I watch the news. He said, he goes, and, you know, he goes, I'm scared to talk to anyone in case I give it them and they die. He said, he goes, and, and, and he goes, I'm just scared to go out. You know, he said, I have to, I have to go to, to, to work. He said, because we're right behind with the, the bills, only being on. 80% of our, of our of our wages up during the first lockdown. He said, but I, uh, yeah, he said, I, I've been scared to death. And you see the relief on his face. And I said to him, yeah, actually, at your age, at 36, you know, this is a virus that is only dangerous to, let's be, let's be really liberal about it, 0.5% of the population. But the businesses that are going down, the, um, the suicides that are going up, um, it, it's just, we're bankrupting ourselves mentally and, and uh, you know, sort of fiscally. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I, I really don't care about money. I really don't care about money. As long as I've got a roof over my head, and food in my mouth, that's fine. 
But to see youngsters having their futures paying away, because they're going to be paying for this for, for decades, decades if not centuries. And let's face it, it will be the average workers, it won't be the top 1% who are making money on, 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 you know, Patrick Valance, for instance, Chief Scientific Officer, £650,000 for shares in GSK, who are partnering uh, Pfizer in this, in this um, vaccine search. <laughs> they're not going to lose. Trust me, they're not going to lose. You are, and I am. There seems so much emphasis on saving everyone with a vaccine from a virus that is less dangerous than flu to most of us. To most of us. To the majority, the vast majority of people. There's got to be more behind that. Normally it's money and power. And that's not a conspiracy theory. Look throughout history what motivates these people. And I think we need to say something. And, and Labour, Labour are just in it with them. And when I see people arguing on social media, oh, the Tories are horrible, vote Labour. They're all not working for you. I'd like to see now, prepared for the next general election, you get someone from your local community it can be a councillor, can be just someone that do, does a load of real good work for you, your community. All chip in, raise them the £500 so they can stand at the next election. And then go and vote for them. Someone that's actually going to do something for you. Don't get et up in this party rosette thing. You know, SNP in Scotland, have you just seen that hate law they're trying to bring in? It's like something out of Nazi Germany. And yet you still get nationalists in Scotland, which I understand. I understand you hate in Westminster. I'm, I'm sadly, you know, I'm, I'm lumbered with that them round my, round my throat. But the SNP, look at that, look at that anti-hate law. It's a piece of disgusting legislation that takes away people's human rights disgusting if hitler had done it if hitler had done it we'd all be up in we'd all have been up in arms we'd have we'd have we'd have gone to war just on that piece of legislation you read it for yourself you read it for yourself comedians um actors can be pulled off stage if you write something that upsets someone you can be arrested it's draconian. And why are we putting up with it? We've still got people saying, oh yeah, SMP, SMP. <sighs> if the people of Scotland want independence, fine, but don't put up with that. What's the point of, of going from being governed by a load of greed-fueled psychopaths to a, a tyrant? No point. No point at all. And television, the news. I, well, I watched that the other morning. I say I was at a friend's and I, I, I was stunned. Matt Hancock with a little smirk on his face, so coming out with all this. Um, it's a really good question. Um, you make a really good point. I'm glad you asked that. If you're so glad that you asked it, answer the fuffing question. If there's not excess deaths for this time of year, and if there's not excess hospital admissions, why are the media banging on as though there are? Why aren't they finding those answers out from the politicians? It's because it's all, it's all as George Carlin would say, because it's the big gang and you're not in it. I hope that if people, I hope people demonstrate, I really do, I really do. And, and, and for those people who have been so scared and so brainwashed by the propaganda that they think, oh, well, if I go on a march, I'll kill my granny. No, just don't visit your granny. Just don't visit your granny. 
Because believe it or not, this is a virus and it is going to go through the population, whether you like it or not, and whether we're locked up for two years or not. It's a virus. The, 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 <sighs> the reaction to it has been strange at, at, at very least. The draconian laws they're bringing in, the way the police have reacted. I mean, a lot of the time, you know, you only see the bad, you only see the bad points of it, but, but the way the police have, have reacted, particularly to lockdown demonstrators, has been disgusting. Has been disgusting. Um, you know, their talk of bringing the army in, well, that's a given if people do demonstrate. But peaceful demonstration, they're trying to take that away from you. Peaceful demonstration, and please, please look around at all the other political parties there are. If you're a socialist, George Galloway's got a, a party. Whether you like George or not, he's got a party, the Workers' uh, Party of Great Britain, I think it's called. There's, uh, there's little parties, you know, the Liberal Party, the Social Democratic Party, if you're if you're more conservatively uh, inclined, have a look round. Maybe join these parties. Maybe approach someone in your community. You know, if you have if you have a, a village hall meeting and there's someone that always stands out, someone doing a lot for the community that doesn't seem corruptible, and I know all human beings are. Maybe say, how about standing at the next general election for for us? Get away from this Labour, Tory, wherever you are, SNP, um, Liberal, Democrat. Get away from that. Can't you see they're doing nothing for you? And if you're a journalist at the BBC, and, you're, and I know some of you are under strict orders not to ask the wrong questions, maybe just think to yourself, this isn't why I got into journalism. I got into journalism to expose the truth. While all this is going on, you've got Assange sitting there rotting in, 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 um, in prison for telling the truth. We all should be really out in the streets demonstrating. But no, they, even the, the, even the uh, news services have put a slant on that that makes it look all Assange, Assange the traitor. Go and research what he actually did. Do you think he deserves to sit in prison all that time for that? So sorry, folks, I had to get it off my chest. But we need to start asking questions and we need to start taking our futures into our own hands. Otherwise, that old saying, you get the government that you deserve, will be... Not a prophecy, not a saying, but an actual fact. And you can see where it's going. You've got to be able to, even if you're the most brainwashed, subservient, propaganda sucking person on earth, you've got to think to yourself, well, if there's no excess deaths for this time of year, and if there's, you know, hospitals, They've got the same admissions as what I don't know about last year, 2018. What what's going on? What's going on? Why am I losing losing my livelihood? Why has Joe and his barber shop closed permanently? Why are all the kids, you know, sort of uh, facing certain unemployment unless you're connected? Let's all start to do something about it. Sorry, had to get it off my chest and social media allows you to do that. I'll stand back and get the flack and a lot of you disagree with me. Water off a duck's back, but it needed for me to be said. Stay safe. Let's hope you aren't one of the 0.05% who, who, who suffer from this because it's not a nasty it's, it's not a nice disease, there's no doubt about it, but, um, you know, we're just not being proportionate.
stay safe, speak soon.